how will these teams be organized? Well, first of all, I will make them. This is actually to produce the best possible teams. This class has a wide variety of experience in physics as well as in biology and chemistry, which as described in later sections, will also be useful as I'm gonna ask you to bring biology and chemistry knowledge to bear. I want this course to be more than just a hoop for you to jump through. I want it to connect to your other courses. I will therefore ask you to fill out a survey and make teams that have strong backgrounds in all of these subjects. I will also ask if you plan to attend most sessions synchronously or asynchronously or pop in and out so I can match you with other people who plan to attend the same way. I will ask you about your schedule and time zones as to ensure that your team can meet outside of class if you so choose, which while recommended is not required. If you choose not to be on an organized team, you can, and in fact are encouraged to work with other people on collaborative activities. You're just responsible for organizing it yourself. If you do choose to be on a team organized by me, there are both additional benefits and additional responsibilities. The primary benefit is having a group of colleagues whose strengths you know and whose commitment has been agreed upon in advance. Such groups tend to help you feel more supported and connected to the course. More con concretely, as described in more detail on the section on exams below, all exams in this course have two parts, an individual and a collaborative. The individual part you will, as normal, complete on your own. After the individual is complete, however, you will take a very similar exam where you're permitted to work with your peers. People on organized teams are expected to work with their teammates and will get one score for the entire team. Those who are not on organized teams, in contrast, while still allowed to work with their peers, must organize these groups themselves and will get individual grades. So they still complete the assignment they're, and they're still allowed to work with others. They're just responsible for organizing who they work with. However, as a consequence of the team cohesion that develops for organized teams, folks on organized teams tend to do better on these collaborative exams, averaging 98.3% compared to 86.2% for those who are not on organized teams. In terms of responsibilities, those on organized teams are respected to outline their collective expectations for each other at the beginning of the semester regarding attendance, meeting outside of class, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. To help provide a system of accountability, all members of organized teams will be asked to rate their peers' contributions at the end of the semester. While there will be practice evaluations so you know how things are going, only the one at the end of the semester will count. The result will be a rating, which is a multiplier which will be applied to all of your collaborative exams. Most everyone, based upon past experience, will earn a one, meaning that whatever they earn on their collaborative exams will go into their grade exactly as it is. However, if one of your teammates is perhaps not living up to expectations you collectively set forth, then the result could be a multiplier of, say, 0.8. The contribution to your grade from the collaborative exams would then be 0.8 times whatever your score happened to be. And that's what would go into your grade. Conversely, if your peers felt that you truly went above and beyond the rest of the group, then they could even award you a score of 1.05, giving you an extra boost. These 1.05s are pretty rare, but they can happen. And I will point out that these scores are not a zero sum game. It's not a requirement that someone gets say less than one for someone else to get it greater than one. That's not how it works. You have the rest of your team has to say, yeah, you really went above and beyond the rest of us. You did more than the rest of us in order to get these 1.05s. If, on the other hand, you decide to go the course alone without an organized team, then all this issue of multipliers and whatnot doesn't will not apply to you. Just whatever you get on the collaborative exams is what will go into your grade. The final response. The final response for team membership is commitment. When you agree to be on a team, you are committing to these other students to support each other. As such, leaving teams will, in general, not be permitted except in extreme circumstances. It's simply not fair to your teammates. They signed up to be on a team with an expectation that their team members would be there. Therefore, I encourage you to think carefully about if you want to be on a team or not, and think carefully about your personal situation and what kind of commitment you can make. You have until the first week of class to make this decision. Once you've decided, there's a 
a little question on Moodle where you can indicate your preference. Again, I'd like to remind you the teams are opt-in, so if you don't respond, then you will not be added to a team. 